Hello, everyone, everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom Through Faith video minute for today, February 5. Today we're going to be reading from uh, Exodus chapter 17. You know, a lot of people think that the pastor can do everything, that he can handle uh, their prayer requests, their hospital visits, their funerals, their weddings, uh, questions they may have in their personal Bible study time, handle pr sermon preparation, handle the Wednesday night Bible study, handle the Sunday night singing, handle the Tuesday night women's meeting, handle the Thursday night men's meeting. Uh, no, he can't. I mean, he can, but he will burn out really fast. I have seen this happen uh, where the pastor is on the go almost seven days a week. Thinking People think that uh, they're at, the pastor is at their beck and call. But the pastor has really one responsibility, to hear from God and to teach the people. Now, the church is not a social gathering. Church is not a place where people come to you know, see friends and have a good time. And the purpose of church is to be refreshed in your spirit, to receive a word of manna from God. And to be re-energized so when you go out and you leave church and you go out into the field, that you're ready for battle, that you will take on the demonic forces impacting your community, your friends, your neighbors, this nation. And much just like in the military, uh, after fighting an engagement, you pull back and you uh, reconstitute yourself, you rest, and then you go back out and do it again. And that's what church is for. That's that reconstitution. That's where you, you come back in, and if you had a major battle and you need some guidance, on, you know, it didn't go quite the way I thought, you know, that's what the pastor's for, to answer those questions. But the pastor's responsibility to the flock, one, is to pray for them or protect them. But two, to provide for them. And that's not providing natural uh, resources, but spiritual resources, the word of God, to lift them up, to cover them and in prayer as they go out into battle the next day. And the story I want to read for you is where uh, the Amalekites had come out. And in verse 8 of Exodus chapter 17, we read, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight them. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. Sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it. Make sure Joshua hears what you're going to write. Because I will completely blot out the name of Amal Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord Jehovah is my banner. He said, because, because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. The point I want you to see is Moses tried to do it himself, tried to hold that staff up himself all day long. He realized that as he was holding his hands up, his people would win the battle. He, they were defeating the enemy. But if he lowered his hands, lowered that covering, then the devil had the opportunity to attack his people. So he tried to hold up himself. He, he was getting tired, and it was, it was a struggle. And before he thoroughly got worn out, two people came to his aid. And Joshua and her, and one 
on one side, one on the other, and they lifted up the staff, helping the pastor to do the covering over to people, to keep that covering in place. They allowed him to sit and rest, but they also helped him to keep the covering on the people. Lord, your, your pastor cannot do it himself. He has to have a couple people that he can rely on, a couple people who will bond with him, a couple people who will lift him up, keep him covered in prayer, and assist him in meeting the needs of the people under his control, under his authority, the flock. And it's a special person that can do that. It's a special person being armor bearer. You know, you, you, we call him today an assistant pastor. But an assistant pastor does not mean he's seeking the pastorship. It does not mean that he is seeking to be the shepherd of the flock. It's just someone that the pastor can rely on. If that's you today. Let your pastor know. If you're the pastor and you're needing help, let your flock know. There is someone in your flock that can help you, that has the opportunity, that has the resources, that has the time to come and assist you. Don't try to do it yourself. You will burn out so quickly. I've seen it before. Well, that may be for somebody today. I pray that it's you. If it is you, let your pastor know. Because when two or more come together in agreement and lift up any prayer request before the Lord. Ah, a three cord, cord, a three strong cord is not quickly broken. And the Bible says where two or more come together and agree, their prayers will be heard. And when you lift up your flock in prayer, in agreement with one another, oh, there is nothing that cannot be done. No thing that cannot be done, which means you are blessed in all that you do.